So um, you can see that there are no requirements for a paper submission when submitted using um, the electronic submission gateway. There are some forms out there that require signatures. That can be handled with scanned signatures, digital signatures, flattened digital signatures. Unfortunately, we don't have time to go into those three because, believe me, and as I think Diane knows, I can talk for hours just on that subject alone. But what it means is that you don't have to and cannot, in fact, submit any paper as part of an ECTD submission, that those things must all be handled in a different way. Once again, and I hate to keep sounding like a broken record, coming back to the criticality of storing those documents in a regulated content management system where they are vaulted and version controlled and you have the ability to ensure that in fact you are sending the correct, in some cases, the signed version of the document within the submission that you're sending. Another thing that is really critical regarding the, um, the content management system controlling these documents is the ability to actually control what the document looks like. Again, not what the document says, not the words within it, but things like the navigation aids to assure that they're there and they're there in a meaningful way. It's um, kind of important to remember, and while everybody knows it, they don't always think about it, that the only method that a reviewer has for navigating an electronic submission are the navigation aids. For instance, the bookmarks, tables of contents within the documents, and things like Appendix 1, 2, 3, 4 aren't particularly meaningful when you are trying to navigate that document as a reviewer. You want actual words used there that mean something. Again, you have a much better chance of achieving this sort of proper hierarchical structure with proper meaningful words in there if you um, are using a controlled system that allows these documents to undergo review, to undergo approval, not necessarily electronic signature approval, but approval that says people have looked at these different elements from a regulatory point of view, again, not a subject matter expert point of view, and that these documents make sense, are meaningful, and ready to be used within a submission. Slightly different issues uh, with Health Canada. They're a little bit um, not quite as far down the road, shall we say, as the FDA in terms of their acceptance of electronic only submissions. They've recently run a pilot. It's been extremely successful. That pilot was sort of uh, hybrid, some paper and some electronic. They are very, very close to announcing uh, the date at which they will prefer and accept electronic submissions only. This is just sort of their initiative in 2010 is to really widen the scope of electronic submissions that are um, acceptable to them and to establish uh, much greater use of a secure gateway, if you will, methodology to send these submissions in to the agency. So again, they are trying to move very quickly toward this electronic paradigm as well. Currently, you can send in a co-submission, so you can send in paper and ECTD at the same time, uh, not something that Health Canada likes. They would like to move away from it. A hybrid submission is the submission in electronic format with certain of the modules submitted in paper. This is something that the sponsor organizations would like to move away from as quickly as possible, and they are getting very, very close to this electronic-only submission, something much more comparable to the way that it is done in other regions of the world. I suspect we'll see that happen uh, sometime this year, if not certainly early, early next year. I'm not going to read this one to you, I promise, in its entirety. It is really just a list of acceptable electronic filing formats to Health Canada right now. It's pretty broad. It, it tends to be you know, much more in the area of devices, 
uh, periodic safety reports rather than the larger submission types, but moving pretty quickly toward that. Purpose of this slide again is to show while the numbers are not quite as dramatic as the FDA numbers, the trend is very, very similar. Uh, this drop that's shown in 2009 is not necessarily due to less people submitting electronically, but just generally due to the vagaries of the economy, less submissions in total being received by the agency. I'm sure we'll see a, a nice spike in 2010 in this exact same graph. One thing that I thought was really significant within Health Canada is sequences failing validation. And this is a particularly good trend right here, from 37% down to 3%. People are getting better. The agencies are getting better at validating these submissions. Now, this is also some of a statistical anomaly when you only have 41 submissions, you're obviously going to have a much higher percentage rate than when you run that against hundreds and hundreds of submissions. But even with less submissions, you can see that the trend continues to be downward. So everyone is getting used to electronic submissions. Everyone understands the huge value of electronic submissions. We'll kind of shift gears here now and talk about some of the capabilities that you want to look for in a submission solution. Um, these are as uh, sort of broad and general as I could make them. What we're really trying to look for is as you sit down and interview and work with multiple vendors, some of the types of things that you want to be aware of in looking for those capabilities. Clearly, I strongly believe that that tight integration with the content management system is critical that the documents are not taken out of the content management system until publishing time so that as they undergo um, version in within the EDMS, as different versions of different documents come into creation, that will be immediately and well reflected by the um, publishing tool, that it will understand that there are different versions of different documents that may in fact be used in different submissions. So it's important also that within this tight integration that the publishing system has access to all to know that there is a newer version of a document and that it needs to be included in a submission. And obviously when you rely upon humans for that kind of thing, it becomes somewhat more problematic to ensure that in fact you are sending the correct version of the document um, at the correct time. 